welcome to Vintage City Group, and welcome to uh, another evening to just take some time to love on each other. Hope you're enjoying your fall as we're kicking in, the weather's starting to get a little colder, and uh, we have all kinds of stuff coming up. I want to make you aware of a couple of those things, uh, like I've been in, in reminding you of Jay and Linda LaRue are coming, and we're going to have them with us in our children's ministry and our youth ministries um, the last Sunday in October, and then we're going to be doing a midweek Wednesday night gathering. Uh, to just worship and allow Jay to, to have the opportunity to share. And uh, whether it's teaching or prophetic, we'll just leave that up to him. And then Sunday, we're going to invite him back to both of our gatherings on that Sunday, November 1st, uh, to just tear it up and have fun with us. So uh, put that on your calendar. Don't miss it. And, um, and then also just remember the holiday season's coming, and uh, we want to make sure you uh, remember to mark the Christmas Eve event we always do here at Vintage. We'll be doing that here. We'll get the times and to you for that and then also the last Sunday of the year uh, we shut down everything to give all of our team and our volunteers a weekend off to rest and uh, we'd encourage you to take that weekend to rest and if you just desperately are like I have to go to church we love that that's great uh, there are some fabulous churches in this region and my heart would be if you want to go to those churches and just declare all the kingdom blessing you can over those places while you're in them literally walk in the door and just start declaring uh, just the, the more of the Lord over those houses of worship so uh, those are my my announcements for you I want to dive in uh, back into Proverbs 10 into some of Solomon's words we're here in verse 12, and verse 12 says, Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love covers all offenses. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love covers all offenses. Again, uh, these greeting card moments from Solomon, very, very practical teaching. Very uh, kind of right where we live type of stuff. This word hatred is to hate or to be hateful. It carries um, two aspects. One is is the way we feel about something, the other would be the way we act towards people. The word love here is affection or care. It's a little bit different than agapeo. That's a Greek word. In the Hebrew here, this word uh, means just, it's, it's human love one to another. And so that could be uh, very far reaching, could be very intimate, it could be very friendly. And, but it's, it's just, it's a word that would, we would use very similarly. So simple principle here is that resentment and irritation when left to fester, have creative power. I mean, you consider that. Resentment and irritation, when left to fester, has a creative power. That creative power is that it brews up and it ends up causing and creating strife, fighting, and a lack of peace. If we remember back to one of our teachings in the last couple sessions, we learned about having the willingness to properly enter conflict, and the result there is peace. So here what happens is when we, when we try to stuff it, it ends up causing problems. So I, I'm sure some of you are naturally stuffers, um, that you brood on things, you, you consider them. In fact, some of the most polite people I know are stuffers because they don't ever want to assume that the way they're feeling in the moment is right. So they'll just sit and ponder and think. And so Solomon here, is challenging to make sure that we never allow resentment, irritation, things that are really bothering us to sit and fester. We need to instead have the willingness to get those out, have a conversation about them that's done in a life-giving way. And the, the remedy here in Solomon's teaching is, is love. Choosing to love someone in the midst of their wrong helps soften that offense in us. What do I mean by that? Think about Ephesians 4 where Paul says, uh, that he urges us to live in a manner worthy of our calling. And one of the phrases he says next is to make allowance for each other's faults. Paul's idea, in some of your Bibles, the word is forbearance. Paul's idea is to set aside money in a bank account emotionally that just says that person's going to fail me. Can I just tell us people are going to make mistakes, they're going to fail us. Um, when we choose to love, what it ends up working out as is forgiveness and grace. And those actions actually cover those other people. We're literally blanketing them in grace. We protect them. Have we ever considered that we can live towards those around us, whether it's family or friends, people that we go to church with or work with, we can live towards them with a certain measure of grace that we've already set aside and said, when you screw up, because I know you will, I've already decided I'm going to forgive it. 
Because the other option is I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get offended. It's going to brew into me as resentment. It's going to come out quarrelsome. It's going to, it's going to rob my peace. I don't know about you. I like peace. I hate fighting. I hate arguing. I don't sleep well when it happens. And so I just love this in Proverbs where Solomon just challenges us to deal with it early, deal with it properly, otherwise understand it's going to come out in a quarrel. So let's not be quarrelsome. Let's be integral people that know how to deal with conflict well. And let's be gracious and loving, giving everybody around us permission to screw up and knowing we're going to forgive them. Love you guys. Have a great night.